reminder always for myself, Ati Allah, Ati Rasulullah, Holy Damri Minkum, that as we enter into the month of Muharram, Al Haram, that asking Allah the beginning of our hijrah, the head of everything that we are trying to accomplish is this holy month. And alhamdulillah in the way of awliyaullah into the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Shams al Arifeen that we go to the app and open up the month of Muharram and click on the button that says the general understanding, these are for the realities of every month. The holy month of Muharram is the opening of the door of Bab al Tawbah. The opening of the door of power that requires our sincere tawbah in English is repentance. That as Qur'an is our power, Qur'an is our guidance, Qur'an is everything of our existence, Qur'an is guiding us, Holy Qur'an. And its reality is on the ninth surah because this way of arifin has to do with the power of this nine. And this Baba Tawbah it has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. It's a surah that has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem because this is a gate in which Imam Ali salam is guiding and teaching that you must sacrifice yourself. You say, Bismillah Allahu Akbar, Ya Rabbi I'm putting my head on the table. Asking every badness in character to bring down that badness and grant me sincerity Ya Rabb, that you be satisfied and happy with me and I put my head on to the table. That cleanse me, purify me and allow me to enter into this ocean of reality, into the highest purpose of our creation. And this Baba Toba begins to open for us and enter into that ocean of reality that every badness to die. And then we read Surat al Tawbah and all of its immense realities, how the surah is, holy surah is drawing us in to this Muhammadan haqqaiq. Because we taught from last year and the previous years. This heart that we're entering is the house of Holy Qur'an, Manzil Qur'an. This house of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is Allah's Divinely speech. The location of Allah's Divinely speech is drawing us. That we thought we are remembering Allah and became proud of that. And Allah reminding, no it's my remembrance of you that's pulling you into this heart. Because my love for you is more ancient than your love for me, you just recently discovered me, I've known you for all of eternity. And my love is calling you into this presence, my love is calling you into this gate. And they begin to teach that enter into that gate, enter with your right foot on this month asking Ya Rabbi and you take a step, I'm asking to enter into this hijrah, to this movement from my badness and bad desires and bad character towards your oceans of repentance, oceans of forgiveness, your Baba Tawbah Ya Rabbi. That ninth name of Sayyidina Muhammad under this gate of Tawbah is Sayyidina Aqib the one whom frees his nation from hellfire. It is the gate of our salvation and the gate of all realities, the highest gift that Allah, Allah can give. It's not just any month, it's the only month. If you miss the bus the rest of the journey is lost to you. Those whom Allah describes 
Li hadan Allah, if Allah don't guide you, doesn't guide you, you can never be guided and everything in darajats. What Allah going to guide you to? To ice cream store, then you were guided to ice cream store. If Allah want to guide you to His highest realities only through Allah's ni'mat that He guides and bring you into that guidance and that reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidina Qib is the one whom frees his nation from hellfire. And this becomes the gate of repentance, the true reality that Allah wound for us. We ask from Sayyidina Qib that dress us, bless us, intercede for us into this light and into your reality that we're entering. And the name of Allah the ninth name which is the lock and Sayyidina Qib is the key is Al-Jabbar. Allah's Jabbarut that the forceful one whom no one can change. No one can change the will of Allah when Allah determines. Means the only one whom can grant access to that reality is Allah So under Sifat al-Jabbar, Ya Rabbi with the key of Sayyidina Aqib we're asking to enter into this gate of maghfirah and forgiveness. The immense gates of forgiveness whom they lay the foundation of its realities, the key of which is in the understanding of Imam Hussain but we'll talk about that later. Not something small that you compared with every other event, it's the gate of salvation that every Prophet was forgiven in these 10 days of Muharram. Their tawbah, their maqfira, their, their repentance was accepted and Allah saved them and their nations in these 10 days. Again it's not something small, it's immense. Every Prophet that was under difficulty Every nation that was under difficulty, Muharram's 10 days was their salvation. Ashura was its opening and its lights that Allah granted forgiveness, granted repentance, granted salvation. And this gate opens and we're asking to enter into that reality that as the Prophets were saved, as their nations were saved to be dressed by this light. This same 10 days in that same direction Allah sent the intercessor for all creation whom his name is Sayyidina Muhammad That as every Prophet was saved, every Prophet was in need of the salvation of Sayyidina Muhammad with Shafat Qubra. That on the Day of Judgment every nation will run to their Prophet and ask their Prophet for intercession and all Prophets will gather say, I'm not the one. Sayyidina Adam will say, I'm not the one, let us go to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. Sayyidina Nuh say, I'm not the one, let us go to Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa until all nations are gathered and let us go to the only one whom can save us is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah granted that immense reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that that presence that comes onto this earth and its migration from the active heart of dunya, Malik al-dunya to the opening of Malik al-hayat into the world of light. Everything and every step that Sayyidina Muhammad made had an immense reality that the king of all kings, of all prophecy, of all texts and of all the heavens is in Mecca and the struggle of Mecca, the symbolism of the struggle of your religion and your physical life. And Allah in Muharram grants the king of all kings of reality that now I'm going to open within these 10 days your movement into the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of light and that's Medina to Munawwara, the city of lights. Why? Because Ashanura, Ashura 
is the opening of lines. So as all Prophets were saved, all their nations were saved, then the one whom saves all of them is then the symbol of that reality. The Muharram opens and Prophet ﷺ's great hijrah and the movement and migration from the realities and the struggles of what Mecca represents that Allah granted in those 10 days, open the city of lights upon this earth and upon all of the heavens. And in that movement into the city of lights what Allah bestowed upon creation, just that symbol of that opening of the heavenly lights and Malik al-Hayyat because the light of all eternity is the ocean of al-Hayyat. That Malik al-Hayyat is going to be opening these realities in Muharram and the hijrah and the movement is the movement from our dunya reality to our akhirah reality. And that's why we're in a continuous hijrah and that's why the, the, the second of Muharram is the pinnacle of our understanding and movement into that reality. If you miss it then you're not moving into that reality. That's why it's the immensity of understanding these teachings that awliyaullah are giving to us of the importance of Muharram. If you don't know that you're entering into that tawbah, you don't know that what Allah is, is opening from your mulk and your dunya life, Allah is opening His heavenly kingdoms. By these 10 days of stepping into that reality, Allah is taking you from your physical reality to your eternal reality. So means then Prophet was what? Migrating from Mecca into Medina. So then the whole step of that has its reality. Imam Ali lied in the bed to sacrifice himself for that hijrah because then there's a secret in this movement. The Prophet has to go and the people of Mecca want to attack. And Imam Ali lies within the bed to sacrifice himself and set the standard that our standard of our nation is that we sacrifice ourselves for the movement of Sayyidina Muhammad The desire and the want of Sayyidina Muhammad comes first. We're not a nation that degrades our Prophet, we don't curse in our Prophet's name, we don't put down what our Prophet brought but we live and die in the service of that reality of Sayyidina Muhammad the most feared nation on this earth. They look for death as others look for life because it's example. Imam Ali salam lied within the bed that this is the key to the hijrah. Before you can go any further acknowledge the one whom lying on the bed as a child whom Sayyidina Jibra'il at his feet, Sayyidina Mikail at his head guarding and safeguarding because Allah so loved that example and that reality. So it means the tariqah comes and teaches this is now the way of chivalry and that's why Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah carries the secret of both these holy companions. Imam Ali comes and brings the secret into the tariqah that sacrifice because we are the people of Kawthar, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْهَارِ Pray unto your Lord and one heart and sacrifice, so He's the exemplar of sacrifice. They're not people who taught and didn't do, that we are the example of sacrifice. Our sacrifice is for the love of Prophet Every time you want to do something in life you say, is this to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad We do it. Everything in our life is to have the ridha and satisfaction of Allah which in reality is the ridha and satisfaction of Sayyidina Muhammad Can Allah be happy with something and Prophet is not? Impossible. And can Prophet be happy with something that Allah is not happy with? They are a reflection of the same reality. So that rhythm and satisfaction is the symbol of Imam Ali lying in the bed that I sacrifice myself and all oh, you are coming through this gate because he's ulul al-bab, the one whom is the custodian and the key 
For this reality is teaching us from my childhood, I lied within the bed to sacrifice myself. Oh you who are out there, sacrifice in this way. Stop smoking, stop drinking, stop doing bad. Put what you need to put upon your head to come against yourself, your bad desires, your bad character. We live in a world where nobody wants to sacrifice now and they want to take everything off and run naked into the streets. And they're teaching, no, we live a life of sacrifice, come our way and come by our example. And as a result then the next example is that Prophet went with his beloved friends Hayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Siddiq al-Mutlaq that take, if you agree to, to live a life of sacrifice then our tariq and our path is the example of Sayyidina Muhammad with his Qalil and his beloved friend that take this companionship. Our Imam is always Sayyidina Muhammad take the companionship of the Siddiq. Whom they are truthful in their deeds and in their character and you should be successful in life. Come, come with me to this cave, your path on the feet of these Siddiqs and truthful servants whom they lay the foundation of their truth with their actions and with their deeds, not by their words because words are cheap but what are the deeds that they do? and the actions that they lay and that becomes the whole turuq for Naqshbandiya because Naqshbandiya is from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq's holy heart. Imam Ali is supporting the tariqah by the example of lying in the bed and Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah that carry the two holy companions and the immense secret of realities. And before entering into Medina to Munawara they entered into the cave of all realities. Qahr al-Thur, Thur, how they pronounce it? Thur, 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 yeah. Thur. <laughs> the holy cave of all realities. So means this hijra, this reality into this city of light, this beloved Muharram is immense realities. In this ten days Allah is dressing the servant from the reality of the gatekeeper the way of chivalry, futuwa, the young and chivalrous one whom she leads a life for us that sacrifice. Every time there's a hard choice, sacrifice. And your, fa- your path and your feet follow the way of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that Allah call you to be a sadiq, a truthful, a, 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 a person whom truthful with their deeds and with their actions. And that Prophet take you to the holy cave and that to enter into that cave and its immense realities, inshaAllah we go in later with the immensity of the cave, the immensity of its secrets, its blessings all the way into the city of lights. And then who Imam Hussain represents of the city of lights? For all that love and all that Allah wanted to bestow upon this immense nation this immense blessed nation with all that Prophet wanted to give to his nation then who held the flag and the reality of Imam al Hussein as salam that knew that 72 will go astray and what Prophet wanted for them could only be achieved by the immensity of the reality of Karbala and Karbala was not something of a personal vengeance but was the immensity of the intercession of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad By the gruesomeness of the death, by the immensity of the struggle Allah gave the account to be full. What is it that you want from this immense misjustice and oppression that has been done upon you and your family and your holy companions and all that they wanted? was to intercede for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not about the cursing, it's not about the fighting because then we lose sight of the immensity of the intercession. That you sacrificed your life, 
you go through difficulties in life so that you have an account with Allah So on a day that you have difficulty Allah will ask, you did good, what do you want? What do you want? And they teach their character. They didn't want anything for themselves. They took their children into that battle. Ayat al-Sabr wa Jabbar under Sifat al-Jabbar. That's the gate and that's why Karbala was like that. That under Sifat al-Jabbar what Allah wants, we won't use our karama, we won't use our power, we won't use our miracles. We'll have patience in what Allah wants from us and one by one their family slaughtered. But the great intercession and the immense reality that was achieved for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah grant us a heart that filled with love and compassion, that just to remember all of these sacrifices, all of this love, all that these holy companions and Ahlul Bayt have laid as a foundation for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad to remind for us begin your year with this immense understanding that Allah complete His favours upon us, that complete His blessings upon us, give us a faith and a light within our heart that you be pleased with, a faith and a light within our heart that Sayyidina Muhammad to be pleased with. For anyone that you love and you know they are suffering in difficulty, your heart bleeds for them. Your heart cries for them, for our love and the immensity of the love for Sayyidina Muhammad we can't imagine anything more horrific than the slaughtering of his holy family and what type of distress and sadness that must have caused that most beloved heart of the Divinely Presence and pray Allah forgive us all for what they did. And what they didn't realize of who that was. We pray that Prophet forgive us and his intercession be upon us, upon our families and our communities. A day of difficulty is coming in which nobody has anything in their hisab and they can cry out all they want. But what is it in your account that Allah to answer? And it's the immense muhabbat and ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad as we cry for your family and their difficulty. Cry for our family in their difficulty. Not everybody will reach where they have to reach. We pray that Allah address us and bless us and that they intercede for us. The immensity of Ahlul Bayt and that they intercede for us and our loved ones and they have a good end. Not to be poor in their old age, not to be in sickness. And that all this rahmah and mercy to be upon us and dress us inshaAllah and give us from the lights of Ashura. And grant an opening, Ya Rabbi, for whoever is sick grant them a healing, for whoever is impoverished grant them your wealth. Whoever is lonely grant them happiness. Ya Rabbi, whoever is in love with Sayyidina Muhammad grant them a nearness that you're capable of all things, Ya Rabbi. Forgive us what we do and don't look to our character but just look to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and love of his holy family and his holy companions. And awliyaullah fi samaih wa fil ard that their support and their nazar be upon us to reach upon us and to help us and push us and guide us inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.